Okay, so I will discuss about mathematical induction. So for mathematical induction, we want to prove that one mathematical statement is valid. And to prove one mathematical statement to be valid, what we can use is mathematical induction. And in proving that it would be valid, we will undergo four steps, or we will use four steps. That would be to verify, and then we're going to have an induction hypothesis, we're going to have the proof of induction, and the conclusion. So for the verification, all we need to do there is to prove that the mathematical statement is valid for n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, and n is equal to 3. And again, no, to prove one mathematical statement to be valid, since this is linear equality, as you can see, it has an equal sign here, then therefore, to prove that a mathematical statement to be valid, the left side of the equal sign should be equal to the right. Okay. Now, the next would be the, the induction hypothesis. So, all we need to do there is to substitute n to be equivalent to k. The proof of induction would be to have or to substitute n to k plus 1 before we can proceed to the conclusion. Now, again, as you can see in the example, there are variables n. Again, please do take note that these are just variables. So, you can use any letter that you want. But in books, what you can see are letters n, which is substituted to k. So, all the n's that you can see here would be substituted to 1, 2, or 3 for the verification. Induction hypothesis would be for k. And then proof of induction would be for k plus 1. Now, so it's better to do the steps in an example so that it would be an, it would be easier to understand. So as you can see, the example here, the mathematical statement would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 dots, meaning there are a lot of uh, var variables or numbers in between 3 and n. Plus n is equal to n multiplied to n plus 1 over 2. So again, the first step would be to verify. So if we're going to verify, again, that would be n is equal to 1, 2, and 3. So how are we going to verify? So what we're going to do, again, we, are, we need to prove that the left side is equal to the right. So our right would be n, n plus 1 over 2. Now our problem here, what would be written on the left? So on the left, since the left of the equal sign is a sequence, then what we're going to use would be the first number or the first term of the sequence. So if, I, if I'm going to prove n is equal to 2, again, left side, left side, right side, it should be equal. Again, the right side would still be the same. The left side now would be the first two, this two, the first two numbers or terms of the sequence. Now, last for n is equal to 3, again, the right side would be n, n plus 1 over 2. The left side would be the first three numbers of the sequence. Now, you might ask, why is it that we're just using n is equal to 3? Well, technically, it should just be n is equal to 1, but there are some mathematical statements wherein for n is equal to 1, the mathematical statement would be valid, and then for n is equal to 2, it would be invalid. Now, we're just testing up until 3 because if it would be valid for the three numbers, it's it, there will be a very, very high percentage that it would be valid for all, for all numbers, all right? So again, all we need to do would be to substitute the values of our n, 1, 2, and 3, to verify, no, to verify. So that would be 1 is equal to, again, substitute n to 1, so that would be 1, 1 plus 1 over 2. And you would see that this would be equivalent to 1 times 2 over 2 
we can already cancel this. So 1 is equal to 1. So for n is equal to 1, the mathematical statement is valid. Now for n is equal to 2, again, 1 plus 2 would be 3. So our left side would be equivalent to 3. So we substitute 2 to our n. So that would be 2, 2 plus 1 over 2. So again, we can already cancel this out. So that would be 3 is equivalent to 3. So again, for n is equal to 2, the mathematical statement is still valid. So for n is equal to 3, our left side would be equivalent to 6. Then again, we substitute. So that would be 3, 3 plus 1 over 2. So 6 is equal to 3 multiplied to 4 over 2. We can simplify. No? So 4 over 2 is, e is equivalent to 2. So that would now become 6 is 3 times 2, or 6 is equal to 6. So as you can see for step number 1, the mathematical statement is, is, is valid. So if the mathematical statement is valid for step number 1, then we can go to the induction hypothesis. The induction hypothesis is the easiest of them all, okay, of all the four steps, because if your step number one is valid, then you can already proceed to step number two. Now, if in case for the first three steps, or for step number one, or for two, or for three, there would be, you would encounter an invalid statement, or the left is not equal to the right, then we can already go to the conclusion. All right, but if it would be valid, so again, just like this one, our step number one is valid. So for induction hypothesis, all we need to do is to substitute all our n to k. So where am I going to substitute n is equal to k? So I'm going to substitute n to be equivalent to k to my mathematical statement. So instead of n, what I'm going to write here would be k is equal to k k plus 1 over 2. So again, as I mentioned, that would be the easiest because that's all we need to do for step number 2. Alright. <clears throat> now, so for proof of induction, this is the hardest part of all the three steps because you need to have a basic foundation or you need to understand algebra before or you need to recall your algebra so that this step number three would be a much easier step for you all right so <clears throat> how would you, you know how would how would us prove that the mathematical statement is valid again we need to prove that the left side is equal to the right now what do you mean by k plus one so for the induction hypothesis, we just substituted, we just substituted the k, our n to k. Now for the the for the proof of induction, what we're going to do there would be to add the k plus one term. So here we're going to add the k plus one term. So we need to determine if I will add another term on both sides of the equation because of the axiom. We need to add whatever we add on the left, we need to add also to the right. So if I'm going to add a term on the left side, whatever that term is, it should also be added to the right. So if I'm going to add a term after because, isn't it, if you're going to look at the induction hypothesis, this is the last term of the equation, of the sequence on the left. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add another term after that. So if I'm going to add another term, would it still be valid? Alright? Now, 
how would I determine the term to be added? Right? So, from, from star, I'm going to write here star, this one. This is our star. So, from star, we're going to substitute n to be k plus 1. So, if I'm going to substitute n to be k plus 1, that would be k. Uh, that would be n, sorry. That would be n. Okay, n. And we're going to substitute n to be k plus 1. So, it would just be k plus 1. Meaning, this is our k plus 1 term. Alright? So, if I'm going to rewrite the equation... Right. If I'm going to rewrite the equation from here, that would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus k. Now, I'm going to add the k plus 1 on the left side. And I'm also going to add the k plus 1 on the right. Okay, so I'm going to denote this as my equation 1, all right? And then I'm going to denote this as my equation 2. My equation 1 is the original mathematical statement wherein we haven't added the last, the, a term after the last. And the equation 2 is the new equation or mathematical statement wherein we added the k plus 1 term. So how are we going to prove that it would be valid? So we're just going to prove that it would be valid if the equation 1 is equal to the equation 2. Alright, so the equation 1 now would be n n plus 1 over 2. And that would be equivalent to k, k plus 1 over 2, plus k plus 1. Alright? So, for equation number 1, we are going to substitute n to be k plus 1. And for equation 2, that is what where we added the k plus 1 term all right so again we need to prove that the left side is equal to the right so if we're going to substitute our k plus 1 isn't it this would be k plus 1 k plus 1 plus 1 over 2 or simply combining like terms that would be k plus 1 k plus 2 over 2. So we want to prove that the right side is equivalent to the, or the left is equivalent to the right. Okay. So how are we going to do that? So as you can see, the right side is, has two fractions or rational expressions. Why? Isn't it? This, is, this has an imaginary one. And how are we going to do that? Isn't it? We're going to do LCD. And to perform LCD, that would be, you divide this, right? And then you multiply it to the numerator. Alright? And then, again, you repeat the process on the second fraction. So you divide and then you multiply. Right? So, you divide and then you multiply. So, if I'm going to divide 2 divided by 2, that would be equivalent to 1 multiplied to the numerator. So, that would be k, k plus 1. If I'm going to repeat the process 2 divided by 1 is 2 multiplied to the numerator, that would be 2, k plus 1. Now, if you would observe my new numerator, when I already performed LCD, I combined the two fractions. You would observe that there are similarities on my numerator. What do I mean? The similarities 
are the k plus 1. And what we can do there is we can factor out the common term. Now, if I'm going to factor out k plus 1 on the first, I can already cancel this out because I already factored it. So the remaining term now would be k. Again, on the second, which is plus, I can already remove this. So if I'm going to factor out k plus 1, the remaining term would be 2. You would observe now that the left is equal to the right. Okay, then therefore, we can already go to the conclusion. What do I mean? For the conclusion, all we need to do is to state the obvious. So, we are going to state the obvious that the mathematical statement is valid. Where n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, n is equal to k, and n is equal to k plus 1. Alright? So that would be if the mathematical statement is valid. So that's an example. Alright, now, so... On the next example, we will now see the difference if the mathematical statement would be invalid. All right? If it would be invalid, what are we going to do? So if it would be invalid, again, no, so this would be our mathematical statement. So this mathematical statement is invalid. So how are we going to prove it? Again, to prove it, we will first do the verify. For us to prove that it would be invalid, again, the left side is not equal to the right. So that's one way to prove that it would be invalid. It can be on step number one, it can be on step number two, or it can be on step number three. So, if I'm going to verify for n is equal to 1, again, on the right side, that would be n squared multiplied to 2n minus 1. And on the left side, that would be 1. So, all we need to do is to substitute 1 on all the n, so that would be 1 squared, 2 multiplied to 1 minus 1. So, that would be 1 multiplied to 2 minus 1. And as you can see, 1 times 1, 1 is equal to 1. Again, I mentioned that this is invalid. Yes, it is. But as you observe that for n is equal to 1, it is still valid. Right? It is, it is, it is still valid. Now, let's check for n is equal to 2. So again, on the right side, that would be n squared, 2n minus 1. And on the left are the first two numbers of the sequence. Again, on the left, that would be 6. On the right side, that would be 2 squared, 2 multiplied to 2, minus 1. Alright, so we simplify, that would be 2 squared, it would be equivalent to 4. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1, so that would be 6. And then 4 multiplied to 3. And 4 times 3 is 12. As you can see, it's already not valid because the left is not equivalent to the right. So what are we going to do there? So if it would be invalid, we can already go directly to the conclusion. Again, we're just going to state the obvious that the mathematical statement.